Hello everyone. Well, I am back in the wilderness again. And well, actually I'm in one of our local parks, but we could pretend it, it could be the wilderness. And I'm out here exploring and it might be like 97 degrees out today, but that doesn't stop me. And I'm out here doing what I normally do, which is just look for cool things. And last week I was out here, I found a barred owl feather. I pulled out my phone, took a photo of it. Um, and a week before that, I actually found this huge snake shed and I took a photo of that and left it. And that's important. You want to take pictures on those kinds of hikes. You don't want to be taking those natural objects with you, sort of like, um, you know, especially if you're in a state park or someplace, that's not really not legal. But there's another reason for it. What if, let's say you're, you find something like a turtle shell or a deer antler, you take that home with you. What happens to the kid who's just like you, just as passionate about nature, they come down that same trail, they miss out on that opportunity because you took it home. Well, it turns out there is something you can find on a hike and you're not limited to just a photograph. You can actually make a 3D copy of it and take it home with you. Sounds mysterious, but it's what today's activity is all about. So um, let me show you what it is. It's great. Okay, so what was this mysterious uh, natural object that we were going to make a 3D model of that we find in the woods? Well, it's right here in front of me. If you look in this wet sand, you can see there's an animal track. Specifically, this is the hind footprint of a raccoon. Now, I pressed this into the sand for this demonstration. I didn't have a you know trained raccoon that ran across this for me. Uh, but you could easily, uh, easily find one of these. I'm sure you've probably seen uh, raccoon tracks or opossum tracks along a pond edge or a stream. Um, I've even seen raccoon tracks along the beach, which I think is, I don't know, it's just funny to me. So we said we were going to make a model, 3D model of this. And when you hear that term, 3D modeling, you think of something high tech. But folks, today we are going old school, all right? We're going to go with Plaster of Paris. And Plaster of Paris might be old school, but it's still cool school in my opinion. And you've probably done this a million times, maybe if you're a grown-up, you've done this in school when you're a kid, uh, maybe you do it with your kids at home, and um, or maybe if you're a child, this is the first time you've ever done it. But I'm going to show you a twist on it that relates to going on a trip like hiking in the woods, because you can't be bringing a bucket of uh, plaster with you a pitcher of water, you know, a container to put the plaster in and a spoon to mix it all. That's just not going to work when you're out in the woods. So let me show you what does work. What you need is one of these, just an ordinary resealable plastic bag. You put your plaster in the bag. It's actually a good idea to have two of these. I can explain in a few minutes what that's, what that's all about. But if you have one of these plastic bags, you put the plaster in it. Make sure to label it. That would be very important. And I've got about a cup in here, a cup and a half or so. Uh, it doesn't matter you just how big of a track do you think you're going to run into. Uh, the next thing you want to do is lay it on a, on a surface like a tabletop or on the ground and carefully do this slowly. Just press out the air and then reseal it like that. And there's two reasons you want to do this. One, it's just a convenience. This will roll up now a lot smaller, more compact. I can put this in my coat pocket. Uh, a knapsack, someplace like this. And two, you don't want this thing filled with air because if it looks like this, you know, if it's like a potato chip bag or something like that, and that pops inside of your knapsack, you're going to have a big mess. And it's also a hazard because breathing plaster of Paris dust is not a healthy thing. So, and this is an important point for you kids out there. You should let your parents place the plaster of Paris in the bag for you. And adults or grown-ups, if you'll just do this in a ventilated area, uh, preferably outside. That's what I usually do. Okay, so let's get to our 3D model here. So, oh, for this, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in a little bit tighter so that you guys can see this a little easier, okay? Okay, so step one, pretty obvious, just open the bag, pour some water in. And you might say, well, wait a minute, where did that water come from? Well, if you're on a hike, chances are you're carrying a water bottle with you, right? But even if you aren't, where are you most likely to find a track like this? I'll tell you where I find them most of the time. I find them along waterways, okay? Ponds, rivers, beaches, places like that. So water is usually available, okay? Where do you find these tracks? So we go ahead and we open this up and we'll pour a little water in. And I say a little because um, it's easy to pour too much in there, okay? So there's sort of a happy medium. If you don't pour, if you don't pour enough, 
water in, it'll be very uh, stiff, very putty-like, and it won't flow into details like these toes or, um, or claw marks or something. Like if this was a squirrel track or something, it might have some little claw marks in there that would be nice to be able to pick up. And if it's too thick, it just won't do that. However, if it's too thin, it will run nicely into those details, but when it hardens, when it dries or sets, it's going to be a very fragile cast and it'll break. Um, it's going to break very easily. So I'm kind of shooting for something in between, um, something between those, which would be like pancake batter mix, okay? So if you've ever made pancakes with your parents, you kind of know what pancake batter mix should be like. That's about the consistency that you are looking for. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing this, trying to get it perfect. So. So I'm just going to do this kind of quickly. I'm going to go ahead and pour this in. And that's pretty good. That is pretty good. It might be a little bit on the thick side, but it's not too bad. Go ahead and pour that in. Oh, by the way, there's a little uh, tip that you can do. If you are worried about your plaster flowing all over the place and or you just don't have a lot of it, uh, you can actually um, take some rocks or sticks and just press them into the soil around your track before you even pour the plaster and it acts like a little dam. It'll contain the plaster in there for you. It also thickens it and makes it a little uh, stronger as well. Oh, and you know when I said that second bag? That second bag is great to have So, because this thing is going to be a mess, this one that you mix the plaster in. Pop it in here and you won't be able to make a mess inside of your coat or knapsack or what have you. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and remove these. Now, what do you do next? Well, it's you just wait. It's like 25 minutes to 30 minutes, and you're thinking, am I supposed to sit here and wait for this blaster of Paris to set? No, you don't do that. You just get on with your life. Go on, continue with your hike, do whatever you're doing. And then when you come back down the trail half an hour later or longer, then you can retrieve this. And by the way, if you are finding one of these tracks along, let's say a trail or a heavily traveled place where other people are gonna be walking, this kind of might be curious to them. So you wanna camouflage it, okay? So that just take some leaves or maybe you found a, piece of bark laying on the ground, something like that that can kind of camouflage it so that nobody disturbs it while you are away, okay, and messes up all your hard work. Now we are not going to sit here for 25 minutes and wait, so I already prepared one, and this one has already set, and it is very well set. So you could just reach in with your fingers and just kind of pry that right out. However, there's a good chance you could break off some of the details because this is not as, as set as it could be. It takes quite a while actually for it to fully harden. So what you want to do is get a stick to act like a little prying tool. Dig down underneath it and gently pry it out. And you'll notice it'll be probably packed with mud or clay or whatever it is that you were um, casting your track in. And just leave it like that. Don't try to remove the dirt yet. Go ahead and just place this in your plastic bag and take it home just like it is and leave it sit for another couple of hours or even overnight and when you're done just take this outside um, where you know like a garden hose or something like that and take a brush and just carefully brush and wash all of that stuff all that dirt and mess off of there don't do this in a sink by the way that could cause some major issues <laughs> do this outside we have a hose and a brush and just clean that off and when you're through this is what you're going to be left with Take a look at this. Here's a nicely cleaned off one here. Let's see if I can get that closer. You guys can see that. Look at that. That is a perfect little uh, memento or souvenir of your trip um, that you took out in the woods. A nice little 3D model there of a raccoon track. And it's lots of fun. I mean, look how simple that was. It was very, very easy to do. Okay, great. Okay guys, well I hope you enjoyed learning that activity. Um, it is a lot of fun and you just got to get out there, get some plaster and some water and you can make some great tracks. In fact, guess where I am today? Take a look behind my shoulder. This little park has a wonderful little pond back here and it's probably got some muddy edges that I'm going to explore and see if I can't find some animal tracks for myself. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope to see you in some future videos real soon. Bye bye.